Pleasure of being here, man. I just got back from Mexico. Oh my God, what a wonderful place. I don't know if you, if you guys have ever been to Mexico, but it's, it's the best because of the drug dealers. I don't know if you've experienced Mexico drug dealers. Like LA, you know, they're typical, right? They're very low key, you know? Hey man, you wanna, you wanna party later? You know, if you, if you need anything, just come talk to me, all right? You just come talk to me. You go to Mexico, cocaine! <laughs> Stadium. Okay! Even the kids are hustlers. Chicle! Chicle? No thanks, buddy. I'm good. Chicle? No, and I know no also means no in Spanish, too. So no. Okay? Alright. It's crazy over there. I wish I could have learned Spanish when I was in college, man. It's so hard. You know, because I wanted to talk with the people there. When I was in college, I took Spanish 3. Times, failed it every time. I don't know how you apply Spanish 1 and ingrain it. You have to use it to ingrain it. How do you use that in real life situations? I'm trying to hit on women in Mexico and they're looking at me like I'm crazy, like, Hello, today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. My brother has a cat. you learn a language without it being in your family. My uncle spoke German, but screw that, man. Uncle, I mean, German, have you heard it? It just sounds evil, doesn't it? It does, it sounds like music played backwards. Six nine, six five, six nine, ten. You really wanna be my love? Six nine, six five, six nine, ten. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Six nine, six five, ten. It doesn't sound like that. You know a language I would have loved to learn? I wish they taught this. Swahili? I don't know if they teach Swahili yet. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. There's only one downside. You can't tell secrets. That's the only thing. Right? Just... Dude, shut up, man. She's right here. You can't whisper that? You can't even yell either. What if you get kidnapped? Just throw you in the van? I wish I had more yell words. Go to Denny's. Waitress is clicking her pen. What can I get you? What'd you say about my mother? racist the other day for saying this. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I said everyone in America should at least know a little bit of English. Not, you know, I don't mean it as, uh, you know, you're an American, get out of America, Donald Trump, 2016. I don't mean it like that. Alright? I just want my jack-in-the-box orders to go smoother. It's nothing evil about that, right? I'll tell you why I say this, right? Uh, I went into a massage parlor once. Yeah, one of those. She's like, oh god, yeah. It was one of those. I didn't lose my virginity in high school. I was like, screw it, I'll go in. And, uh, so she went to test me out to see, you know, if I'm down for that. And I was, but I didn't know they have to give you clues to see if you're in for that, you know? You can't verbalize it, you know? It, it might be a sting up, you know? So this was her clue. She's just massaging my back. I'm naked on the table, which I think is normal, right? And then, <laughs> 10 minutes in, she just sticks a finger in my ass. That's what she did. <laughs> First of all, that's her clue, okay? Winking, that's a clue, all right? This shit changes lives, so. I'm a white guy, I'm just sitting there taking it. Oh, this is just some ancient ninja massage technique. I need to, I need to be open-minded of all cultures. Right. So I'm not turning over. I'm supposed to turn over. I had no idea. And then so she gets mad, she just starts <laughs> like she's deleting old junk mail. Like, oh, I can't sign over this. Right. I guess I made a noise. I go, ah, and she goes, oh, you know like? I mean, you could have learned at least three more words, you know, like, finger, and butt. You could have asked before these events. Now I know that I like that. I didn't want to know that. It's not a happy ending, that's a sad beginning. What is this? I'm trying to trying to get healthy, man. I quit drinking. You know, this is my New Year's resolution. I knew I had to stop drinking because I had to go to the bathroom really bad at my friend's house and I had to pee. I missed the toilet completely. And uh because I was in his kitchen. So I was like, oh, I come back on this drinking. I believe in New Year's resolutions. I quit smoking. It's been a year since 2015, so now that's actually been technically a year. Uh, 365 days, no smoking. Uh, thanks. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I know some
of you guys are trying to quit, here's some advice. Everybody says it's nicotine. It is not nicotine that makes cigarettes so addictive. This is what's so addictive. Going outside for no reason. <laughs> right? You get to go out and talk to smokers. That is the best conversation you could have. Right? Inside, it's always fake. Like with coworkers, it's casual jeans Friday. And whatever, Susan, you fake bitch. I don't care. <laughs> you go outside and talk to a smoker. They're going to say something interesting. They're going through shit. That's why they smoke. Right? Just, so she's keeping it. <laughs> Let's light up. I want to hear this. Oh, so great. It's boring being healthy, man. I, to, I haven't been in a McDonald's in so long. I actually went in there to go to the bathroom at McDonald's. How is that shit food? You know? You ever see the way kids react when they eat it? They just go insane. They just, ah! right when they just bite into it. You ever go down to like the Whole Foods aisle, organic stuff, all the kids in the shopping carts, they're pulling out their W-2s and... <laughs> Tax info. I'm trying to be healthy, but man, it's just the healthy people. Ugh. I'm going to Whole Foods, you know these people? Do you know organic? Do you organic? Do you eat cage free eggs? I eat cage free eggs. My eggs had a life. They do Bikram yoga on Fridays. Life. This is why we're so fat as a country, because the healthy people we should be listening to are annoying as fuck. <laughs> I can deal with the North Face jackets. Uh -huh. Ugh. Stand it, man. I'm paranoid of the food, though. You look at some of the food, man. I was looking at the chicken. You ever notice how many asterisks there are in the chicken? The non-organic poor people chicken? Bam! Right there. The rich people chicken, it says no GMOs. You know what it says on the poor people chicken? No GMOs asterisk. How the fuck do you get rid of the asterisk? When it comes to people's health, I can't do that. You can't do that. What if you're on Tinder or eHarmony? You're just flipping through profiles and it says STD free, asterisk. Are you gonna, are you gonna them? No, you're not. It's hard to be healthy, man. It really is. It's a class thing. You know, I tried to buy bananas at Whole Foods the other day. Organic bananas. Who, organic bananas are the NFL wives of fruit. They are. They're skinny and curved. You have to have a shitload of money to get them. Right? And then within two days, they're all bruised up. And it's just... <laughs> Plug break. Domestic violence. Thank you, Santa Barbara. All right. It's just not in my nature to be healthy. I'm from the Midwest originally. I went back there. Oof. You know, I know there's a big thing against fat shaming now, but fucking Oklahoma needs some shame, man. I don't know what's gonna stop them. <laughs> Saw this lady. You ever see someone so big where body parts just blend together? You ever see that? This woman had bicep ass cheeks. You ever see that? There's an ass cheek on the bicep. Right? She had a tank top on, and it said, if you can't handle a girl my size, you don't have the equipment to do so. What are you talking about, a, for a forklift? What, what, what do you mean? It's just a, it, I mean, it really is. I'm from the Midwest. I don't think it's a stereotype to think this way. It's nothing but fat racist. It's nothing but. I swear it is. I met my uncle the other day. Here's the cool thing about racism now, and I know that just sounded weird, but this is the cool thing about racism now. I met my uncle for the first time, right? And he's like, whoa, you used to live in San Francisco, huh? I'm like, here we go. Because here's the thing about racists now. They have to fill you out to see what team you're on now. They can't just start saying their shit. You used to live in San Francisco, huh? Yeah, I used to live in San Francisco. A lot of Chinese out there. <laughs> and I know what he's doing, man. I know what he's doing. He's dipping his toe in the racist pool to see if it's warm. Like, I don't know, is it warm? <laughs> Wait for me to go, yeah, too many. Ooh, cannonball, I got a friend. <laughs> or that could have been me. That could have been me, though, too, at the same time. Because I'm, I'm a young millennial, fucking liberal, I mean, everything's racist to me now. You know, it fucks with your head, you know? And he could have been asking about cuisine, you know? He, he might not have been going that way, you know? I don't want to old white people to have to walk on eggshells in 2016. Oh, my grandma be like, I remember the first time I watched colored television. You mean BET, Grandma, you racist bitch? How dare you? Oh, overcorrection. Oh, dear God. There has been a little bit of an overcorrection. Can't we agree on that? You know, all my liberal white friends, I don't see color. What are you, a fucking dog? What are you talking about? It's not racist to see color. It's fine to notice difference. Everybody here, you notice color. You do. If you go into a sushi restaurant, you see a white guy cooking, <laughs> fuck this place. No. Someone needs to fire Travis. <laughs> Be like a real sushi restaurant. And hire a Chavez. Because this is not... <laughs> not authentic. Isn't that ridiculous?
ridiculous, man. I'm so colored. That's so ridiculous. Is seeing gender gonna be sexist now? You know? Hey, I heard you hooked up with that bartender, bro. Yeah, I fucked the shit out of that person. I was either sucking balls or titties, man. I don't see shit like that. It's 2016, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm from, uh, from the Midwest. I got ADD. Yeah? Give it up for that guy. He's paying attention. That's awesome. It's the worst ADD. I, I have ADD. It's because my mother was white trash and had me too early. All she ate was hot dogs and Pepsi because that's all she could afford when she was pregnant. And now she's like, why can't you get your homework done? Because I ate pig assholes drenched in chlorine at my latest thing. Like, nobody ever calls out women when they're pregnant too early. Every time you have, like, a, a guy that's gonna have a kid too early, it's like, dude, you don't even have a career. What the fuck is wrong with you? But, like, women, it's just, oh my god, how far along are you? You're an angel. You're an angel. Cashiers at fucking grocery stores. You're, you're pregnant. You're an angel. When did you become an angel? When you're bent over the coffee table? Oh my god, I'm becoming an angel right now. Currently an angel. Okay. ADD is the worst. It's the fucking worst. I have that because of her. Ritalin. I was on that 90s drug. Ritalin. Oh, that was the shit. I'm sure you guys still sell that a little bit. It's the best, man. Because you didn't have to be a parent in the 90s. You hand that pill to the kid, come home from work. Timmy, did you get your chores done? I built a Volkswagen from scratch. What the fuck? <laughs> Because people don't respect ADD. They don't respect that learning disability. Everything else, dyslexia, yeah, all the respect in the world. But people think it's effort induced with ADD. They just come up to you, just focus harder. You just need to focus more, all right? Focus. That's why like going up to a blind kid, try squinting. <laughs> Squint harder, you blind fuck. I don't understand. All because I had a single parent home. That's why. I mean, you didn't really just stop with the single parent. Even when you watch like the Starving Kids commercial, right? They always show like the mother, and they make it like this sad violin thing. She's all alone raising all 18 of these children. There's nothing she could have done. I got an idea. Stop fucking. Right? If you live in a hut, don't be a slut. If you live in a hut, put in your butt. Whatever rhyme you want to do. Just don't have a kid. Kid. I got off the ADD too because my mother is religious. She's like, don't worry, Jesus will cure you. Jesus will help you academically. I'm a comedian right now. <laughs> she was just so religious, man. She caught me masturbating once. So awkward, man. Like, what happens if Jesus comes back? Why are you doing that? That screwed me up for years. Years. I thought, like, what type of guy is Jesus? Like, that's your first errand after 2,000 years? Like, that's your first thing, busting on seventh graders? Hey, what the fuck are you doing? I'm back, motherfucker. Go to hell, bitch. And then I go to hell? Really? I'm burning in hell for that. I'm burning next to Hitler for that. I gotta make prison talk with Hitler. Hey, what are you in for? I killed six million people. Oh, me too in my sock. <laughs> Guess my roommates. Uh, thank you for coming out to the show instead of watching the NFL. I'm so sick of the NFL. Uh, why, why are we trying to preserve NFL brain cells? I don't get it. Like, it's supposed to be violent. You know what I mean? Why are we trying to preserve NFL brain cells? I was watching the Steelers game the other day. And they got the whole player intro. Brad Johnson, 99, Georgia 10. <laughs> then the next guy, TV Hardaway, 88, Tennessee State. Like, they're already retarded. Let them get hit. Why are we? Just let me watch them get hurt. I like violent sports, man. That's why I love boxing. Everybody's an MMA. I'm, I'm boxing all the way. Boxing, you get way more messed up. Boxing fan, awesome. I uh, Because UFC is not as dangerous. It's not as dangerous. It means... If you look at it, it's a couple of punches and then maybe some man porn, that's about it. <laughs> Boxers get hit more, way more, and it accumulates. You gotta look at them when they retire. Retired boxer and retired MMA fighter. Retired MMA fighter, professional commentator, every time. 
You ever see a retired boxer in an interview? Floyd Mayweather Sr., what do you think about your son's fight coming up next week? You got the dad, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He go here, I got the road, you know what I'm saying? I got the road, and then he just step in and I got to do it like that, you know what I'm saying? It's all here, motherfuckers get it. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag money team, bitch. <laughs> Subtitles say all question marks. <laughs> I miss Tyson, man. You guys, I don't know if you guys got to see Tyson. At one time there was heavyweights. You got to see people become retarded in the fight. It was just like, <laughs> you see people getting messed up. Tyson had the greatest trash talk. Everybody tells you, oh, Ali had the best trash talk. No, Tyson. He would reset your brain with the shit he would say. <laughs> Ali was cute. You know, he was cute, clever. My jab. My jab is so fast. I'm like a butterfly. Tyson, I'm gonna consume his testicles in the ring. <laughs> He had this, like, sexual cannibalism to his trash talk. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Because nobody's gonna try to get in your head when you're clearly out of your fucking mind. He wins every trash talk. You guys are young, you know, you're in a club, you know, you get in a fight, fellas. Don't go Ali with it, go Tyson. You will save your life. Spill some buff guy's drink. Oh, my, my bad about that, man. You spilled my beer, bitch. Now it's going down. I'm gonna finger you in the parking lot. <laughs> Yo, it's cool, man. I'll just buy another one. Right. Alright, guys, I'll call you guys right after the show. Yeah.